Welcome to the demo for projection policies and aggregation policies. My name is Bingjun Yan. I'm a product manager on the data privacy team. Today, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating, assigning, monitoring, detaching, and verifying these policies. Now, let's first take a look at projection policies. A little bit of context, we have an employees table here. And in the table, we have some sensitive uh, information columns such as SSN or salary information. And as a data admin, I would like to allow lookup functions for these columns such as group, join, filter, et cetera, for analysts. However, I do not want them to actually see the value of these sensitive columns. And this is where projection policies can potentially help. In order to use projection policies, the first step is to create a projection policy. And for the demo purposes, I'm going to create the projection policy based on different user roles. So if the user role is account admin, I will allow projecting the values of these sensitive columns. However, for other user roles, uh, we will be preventing them from viewing the column values. So let's go ahead and create this projection policy for do not project salary, and then create a similar one for SSN. Now that the projection policies are created, we can assign the projection policies to the relevant tables and the columns. So we'll assign the projection policies to the employees tables, to the salary column, and then to the SSN column. Now that we've created and assigned the projection policies, let's take a look at uh, whether these policies have been created correctly. So you can use show projection policies to verify that the newly created projection policies are displayed here. You can also specify a specific projection policy to see the description of its policy body. You can also use the Snowflake account usage dot projection policies to actually return a, a catalog for all projection policies in your Snowflake account. You can also use the policy references information schema table function to return a row for each object that has the specified projection policy. So in this case, we want to see the list of the object that has this do not project salary projection policy. And you can see that we have this employee table with the salary column. And then you can also see a list of the projection policies assigned to a specific table, in which case uh, it's the employee table. And we can see that there are two projection policies that are associated with this table. Now let's verify how projection policy works. So as the account admin, which do not have any projection constraints on this employee table, I should be able to run this select star from employees table to get to be able to see everything. However, as an analyst, since uh, SSN and salary are projection constrained, if I run this query, I'll see this error message indicating that the following columns are restricted by a projection policy. And the projection constraint columns are SSN and salary. And similarly, for the next query, where I try to join the employee table with the employee verification table on the SSN column to get the I-9 verification status for employees. Uh, since the SSN is in the select statement, this query will return an error as well, indicating SSN cannot be projected. However, if I remove this SSM in select, I will be able to see the information uh, from the query results. And the next example is just to see for the projection constraint columns such as salary, we can use that in filter as long as this uh, information is not in the select. So let's go ahead and run this query. And as expected, as an analyst, I'm able to see this information. So now let me switch back to account admin, and I want to show you how to replace and detach a projection policy. So in order to replace a projection policy, you want to create a new projection policy first. 
so in this case, I'm changing the allow to be true for so that we can project SSM. And then you want to use the force parameter to actually detach the old projection policy and replace that with the new projection policies that you just created and do so in a single command. So that leaves no gap in your protection. So let's go ahead and do that. And for, and for some reason, if you want to just detach a projection policy, you can simply alter the table, uh, modify that column, and unset the projection policy. So that's for projection policy. And now let's move on to aggregation policy. Uh, the background for this is we have a household income table where you have the individual information with their income and also their association with the different households. And in this case, the admin would like to allow data analysts to run aggregate analysis from this table, for example, group by zip code to see the total income uh, from the households or the total income from all the individuals. But uh, admin does not want uh, does not want the analyst to be able to actually view the individual record for that row or for the household. And this is where aggregation policy can help. So how to leverage aggregation policy? The first step is to create an aggregation policy, very similar to projection policy. So we are also creating this aggregation policy based on different user roles. If the user is account admin, then there is no aggregation constraint. However, for other roles such as analyst, uh, we will require the group has at least three number of records in that group in order to return the query results. So let's go ahead and create an aggregation policy. And if you want to modify an aggregation policy, you simply just need to set the body to the new value. And in this case, we're going to modify the minimum group size to be two instead of three. So let's modify that. And then after the policy is created, we want to assign an aggregation policy to a table because aggregation policy is a table level scheme, a table level uh, policy. So let's go ahead to assign this household income aggregation policy to the household income table. And similar to projection policies, you will be able to view uh, whether you have created the aggregation policies correctly. So we can run this show aggregation policies to verify that this uh, aggregation policy is the new one that I just created. You can also uh, get the description of this household income aggregation policy. And here you can see the policy, policy body where you set the minimum group size to be two. You can also return a catalog for all aggregation policies in your Snowflake account. And you can use the policy references information schema table function to return a row for each object that has the specified aggregation policy, which is household income aggregation policy. And it should just be the household income table here. And you can also return a row for each policy that's assigned to the table. In this case, it's a household income table. And you can see that we have the household income aggregation policy associated with this table. Now let's verify how aggregation policy works. So as an account admin, since there's no aggregation constraint on this table for you, you will be able to just run this query without any problem. So let's also run this query, which groups by, by zip code, and then it will give you a distinct household count uh, in this zip code group, as well as the number of individual records in this zip code, and then the total income. And as you can see for the number of records in the group, since that we have specified the minimum group size of this group should be at least two. And in this case, this zip code 28337 uh, does not meet the minimum group size requirement. So if I run this query as an analyst, 
you will not be able to see this zip code group. So let's verify that. As expected, for the zip group 2H337 is displayed as null. So now let's switch the analyst row back to account admin. I want to walk you through the replace and detach aggregation policy. Similarly to a projection policy, you need to create a new aggregation policy. So let's do that. And then you can replace the existing aggregation policy with a force parameter. And to detach an aggregation policy, you simply just use onset aggregation policy for that table. Now let's talk a little bit about using entity level aggregation policy. So an entity refers to a set of attributes that belong to a logical object. For example, household information in this case. These attributes can be used to identify an entity within a data set. And entity keys should be used when you want to protect entity level information instead of row level information. Let's actually take a look at an example. It'll help you better visualize this. So let's assign this uh, aggregation policy to the table with an entity key. In this case, is the household ID. And then let's run this query as account admin who does not have any aggregation constraints on this table. So this, the query should go through without any problems. As you can see in the query results, we have one zip code 2H337, which only has one individual record in the group. That's why previously when we applied the aggregation policies on this table without an entity key, this is the only group that didn't show up because it didn't meet the minimum group size requirement. However, we have another zip code, which is 60601, which has two individual records, which is why it was showing earlier, but only has one uh, household in this group. And since now we've added aggregation constraints on this table with household ID as the entity key, this group 600601 and this group 28337 have only one household in there, which won't meet the minimum group size requirement. And it will, it will not show in the query results if we run this as an analyst. It will only show the first four zip code groups um, with the distinct household number that is more than or equal to two. So let's verify that. So now I switch the row to analyst and let's rerun the query. As you can see, the result is as expected. We are only seeing the first four groups that meet the minimum group size requirement for the entity key. And for the rest of the groups, we're just seeing a null group with the aggregated values. That concludes the training for projection policies and aggregation policies. Thank you for watching.